guys. All right. So sixth gen action today on the dyno. 2017 50th anniversary car. So this is a car, another another return customer. He's got uh, he's got some one LE wheels on it. Before we get into the motor again. So he's got a drag radial on his stock wheel, or on these uh, one LE style wheels. And I don't like running drag radials on the dyno when I'm doing a bunch of tuning on it. So, so we put, I uh, got some, some uh, 2010 Camaro wheels we stick on there and, and uh, for some dyno dummies and they work really good. So that's why those are on there. But anyway, to the fun stuff. So I want to say three years ago now, we, we installed this Magnuson supercharger in this car. So this car was just headers and a Magnuson. And I can, I'll bring up the baseline when we look at dynographs later, but we were right around 600 at the rear tires with that, with that package. So it, we had a, uh, we, at the time, uh, Rotofab didn't have their five inch intake. So we added a five inch intake to it. We did have the big throttle body on it. Uh, we just had what Magnuson supplies as an elbow and then a, uh, we had a Rotofiber air box on it, but we didn't have the five inch. So, so now, so basically yeah, that that's what the car was. It was supercharger, the 2300 Magnuson heartbeat, big throttle body, a Rotofair rear box, our American Racing 2 inch headers, back to the stock muffler with a three inch X bite. We, uh, it came back for a camshaft and cylinder head package. So we did uh, our ported cylinder heads, our stage one uh, LT supercharger camshaft, and I'll fire this thing up and you can hear it idle. LT4 high pressure fuel pump, LT4 injectors, a uh, DSX auxiliary low side pump, and a flex fuel kit, DSX flex fuel kit. So we are going to do a flex fuel tune on this also. That's what I'm working on right now. So I I did most of the, the idle. I still got to work on the idle a little bit. Getting, I got to get it out in the street to nail the idle down completely and do some beats, finish the VE tuning and stuff on it. I got a base. Again, you do enough of this stuff and you got kind of base tunes you can work off of, but every car is a little bit different and um, everything needs fine tuning from, from a base tune that I have. So idles pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the weighted idles. The, uh, again, before I get it on the street, I can kind of get all that stuff 90% there. I did a couple partial pulls just to make sure that the fueling and the timing were happy with the cam. Um, I'm only seeing about seven pounds of boost, not even six and a half. So we're going to see this is a 90 millimeter pulley with with the uh, with what Magnuson supplies for a lower balancer, which is a ZL1 lower. So um, we may step the pulley down, but I'm I'm thinking we're going to get to our horsepower growth. Basically, I'm, we're looking for upper 600s on pump gas on 93 and we're looking for 720s on E85. And that's really all the farther we push these LT1 bottom ends. Um, and I th I'm thinking we're going to be real close to that on this boost level and on the on the LT1s with the 11 and a half to one compression I like the lower the boost we can run the better is the way I look at it and the fueling is happier the you know the narrow the narrower the pulse width we can run the better on these cars and get the injection the injection event over and done with before you know before any compression starts to happen you know where, where you're into your compression stroke you start spraying too far into the compression stroke on these engines and that's where stuff starts getting unhappy so um, I'm liking where we're at fueling wise and we got a lot of headroom to go on the 85 so I think we're just gonna leave that pulley for now and see where we end up so first pull I did first full pull it's right there that's that was about 10 9 10 degrees of timing down low ramping up to about 15 just touching 16 at the top i did not rev it all the way out i cut the, the pole a little short just because i see i saw what i needed to see as far as fueling and timing and stuff so um so i just made some changes to it and kind of touched up the fuel curve a little bit i was pretty close but i took a little bit out in some spots added a little bit down low and bumped the timing up a degree so let's uh let's do another pull here and see what happens
got a nice little chop to it. I can take a little bit further. I had the rev limiter still at, at my old rev limiter, so um, again, until you know when you do some open heart surgery on one of these things, we uh, I always work up to it. So I'm going to bump the rev limiter up to 6,900. Um, forgot to mention also, obviously, when we do a cylinder head package on a six gen. Obviously, we, we pull the heads. Heads, you know, heads get ported, and we change the lifters out. You got to take you got to take those DOD lifters out. Those are those obviously can't handle a cam with you know over 600 or over 500 lift, I should say, and a stiff valve spring. So we do run a beehive spring on these. Uh, we got a, a setup that we really like that's proven, and so we do a beehive spring. We do hardened push rods. We do this particular car has a uh, GM performance lifter in it so some of the some of the builds will go to a Johnson lifter but um, this car we 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 didn't go that racy on it because it's a car that will be raced very little basically it's just a you know it's a toy it's a weekend toy so so yeah that's probably pretty much it as far as power goes um, on pump gas so Next step would be uh, drain what's left of the 93 out and start on some E85 tuning. So that'll probably work into tomorrow. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Like I said, we're only seeing about just touching, barely it's touching seven pounds of boost on it. So um, it's pretty good power for that for that boost level. So E85, we're going to be able to hit our. I think we're going to be able to hit our. You know our our low 7 720 or 720 some, and again that's all the farther we like to take the LT ones. You know some some guys might want to go further on them, but we like to be conservative. You know, so make this stuff last for years and years and years, even with a setup like this. So so yeah, we'll continue to tomorrow. Put some methanol in it, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, guys, here's where I'm at on E85 so far. I just did uh, drain the fuel, obviously, filled it up. We're seeing about just under 70%, 68, 69%, something like that. Um, got my, I started, kind of added a little bit of timing just to start out, like three degrees. Work, I'm worked up to, I think I did four and a half on the 712, and 719, I'm now at five degrees. Uh, over my my base my basically my uh, my main spark table so that's adding fuel when I'm doing E85 flex fuel tuning um, I'm adding fuel to there's a table specific to the flex fuel timing so you can add or subtract timing based on fuel content so main spark tables and then there's an there's an adder there's a bunch of other adders obviously but there's an adder for the flex fuel and I can add based on basically based on air mass and RPM. And then there's a multiplier uh, based on alcohol uh, percentage, ethanol percentage. So, so yeah, so I'm working up the timing. 719 here, I'm about total of like 21 degrees at the top. So I just play with the timing down low a little bit. I'm gonna leave it, I, I'm gonna leave it at the, at the top. Um, do one more pull here just to make sure we're, uh, we're backed up. But this is right where I wanted to be. This is exactly where I wanted to be. I'm really happy with that, for especially for the boost level. Again, we're only seeing seven pounds of boost on this, this application, and that's the way we like to run these LT1s. It's again, we like to keep the boost low, and uh, we got, you know, we're nearing the limit on our fuel as it is, so we couldn't go any more boost if we wanted to. So, and that's kind of what I figured anyway. When we, you know, it's, we've done these setups before, and that's that's just where we end up on them when we're doing a flex wheel setup. So, so yeah, let's uh, let's hop in the car. Oh, let me turn the fans on quick. So I got make sure we're keeping stuff 
cool in the front. We want to obviously have been doing some working runs on this thing, so it's it's pretty warm as it is. Go ahead and fire it up here. Some of you guys that are HP tuner savvy, you might notice this knock sensor. That is actually some, some uh, I use the static retard tables to actually pull uh, fueling out on the number two and the number five cylinder. The LT1s for some reason have a real sensitive number two, number five. And I don't know if that's just the way the knock sensors read or if it's those two cylinders are just more knock chrome, but I do pull a little bit of static retard. The factory actually does that also. If you look at, uh, if you guys, again, if you guys are HP tuner savvy and you've looked at factory LT uh, calibrations, LT4 and LT1, they do, there's, a, there's a, a table called static retard and they do pull timing out of individual cylinders. So um, I, I utilize that. I, it seems to work really good. I've, I've done that on all of them and from day one. And, I can, uh, if you pull a degree or two out of a couple of the specific cylinders, it allows you to hold hold some timing in all the rest of the cylinders, and it's worth a little bit of power, but, um, it's, you know, and the factory's not doing it for, they have a reason for doing it, so. So, yeah, you can see boost is, I mean, down here, we are, you know, that's like six pounds, six pounds, maybe getting into just touching seven pounds at the top. I mean, I'm reading KPA, but just kind of based on, I read enough KPA, I can kind of extrapolate or kind of guesstimate on where I'm at for, without doing a calculation. So down there, I mean, that's that's even under six pounds. It's touching, you know, it's touching just under seven pounds or about seven pounds there. It's tip, pretty typical of a Magnus 2300, even the heartbeats where we see, you know, where the engine is a little bit less efficient down low, you get a little bit more boost. And then when the engine starts really getting to its efficiency, the boost drops just a little bit. And then as the engine starts to run out the back and efficiency drops, you start to build a little, and, and the supercharger starts spinning faster, you get a little bit of a boost, boost rise. Um, so we are, again, this is just under 70% ethanol. Just reading my content here on that. Yep, actually we're right at 70, 70.2. That's about as high as we can get this time of year. Um, and my air fuels are 
LT motors, especially on, when I'm running E85 on these things, I run them leaner. So, but you can see my pulse width, I'm there. I mean, 5.8, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, some guys say five and a half is the limit. I I find success as long as you're under six. So, and my air fuel's, you know, 23, 4 Lambda. That's really where I want to be. That's exactly where I want to be on, a, on one of these. So, that's looking really good. Um, you know, 20, 21, 21 and a half degrees of timing. That's as much as power as like it was. It wasn't making any more power after that, so I left that. Um, you know, I kind of played with, you can kind of see the timings ramping in. I kind of play with the timing a little bit. And this is where it's the most happy, pretty typical. Having the, you know, as the RPM builds, having the boost ramp, you know, with, or sorry, as the RPM builds, having the timing ramp with a boost curve that's pretty flat like this. So, you know, as the RPM builds, you can put more and more lead. Piston speed goes up, you can put more and more lead on the spark. So, all right, let's take a look at the gynographs. Enough nerding out over that stuff. <laughs> Hit these fans. Looks up. Looks like we backed that up and picked up a couple horsepower, but um, and I added a little bit of time. Yeah, it, I added like a degree down in here just to see if it would do anything. Like way down at the bottom, it's kind of hard to see. It's yellow. Let me get rid of that crap. Um, all right. I never got a bunch of working runs on this thing, so so yeah, that's that's the final there on E85. So again, that's uh. That's kind of that's basically our stage 2S package. So that's a you know on an LT, you know, it'd be same as an LS and L, a stage two where we're doing a top end, we're doing heads, a camshaft, upgrading the camshaft. We have a supercharger on it, we got our headers on it, we got a exhaust system on it. This guy's a stock muffler. Um, our camshaft. We do a cam obviously on the LTs, we gotta change the lifters, we change the push rods to a hardened push rod. Uh, we use a single beehive spring uh, that's good for 650 lift. And the, the cylinder heads are CNC ported on this car. So that is also helping with our getting this nice number out of a real low boost boost level like this. So, and it's a real nice looking curve. So I'll, I'll set this car up to shift it probably. Again, LT1, I know, I know you can push them harder, but you know, if it was my own personal car, I'd be winding this thing out, you know, past seven, but it's a customer car. We want these things to last years and years. So I'll probably have it shift right about the top here. 6,800 is where my shift point's gonna be just you know, just want to make sure this things can can live a long, happy life, and not and not uh, we don't want to hurt anybody's car. So, um, so then we can uh, let me uh, just bear with me. I'll go back through, and we can kind of look at the uh, the progression here of of what we did for power um, and kind of how we built up to these mods. So, go back to my and I got to go back to my pump gas here, and I got to find it because I was working those runs up. As you saw earlier in the video. Let me see here. There it is. So there's the difference between. So this is where I was before on pump gas, and this is where I'm at. You know, on, and I did run that, cut that run a little short, but obviously you can see the trend on E85 and and pump gas. It'll, I'll, I'll let it wind out anyway, but I just cut it short because I, I was kind of doing working runs and I knew where I was going to be on pump gas and. Just to get through the tuning process here, not spending days on it, I, you know, I, I got to kind of be timely on some of this stuff. But so yeah, that's the difference between 93 octane and E85 on a setup like this. So 93 octane, we are now 16 degrees of timing is about where I ended up on 93 octane. So. Um, This pull too, I know it's kind of splitting hairs. The 93 octane, I was really close. I only had two or three dyno pulls to get to that point. Whereas this, this, I'm, I'm in, you know, five, six pulls, so the blower is a little bit warmer. But I'm sure if we let this thing cool off and I did a six gear pull, we'd see 740 or something. But I, you know, again, we're not racing dynos. We're here to see this. We're here to see the gains we get from the modifications we're doing. So um, that's the ultimate. That's why we use the dyno. That's what we're using it for. We're, you know, so we can measure our horsepower. So then I'll go back and again bear with me here while I go back to my to my baseline I did before we put this car into surgery here. I just 
just got to find it. Yeah, there it is. So we did baseline this car when, when the customer brought it back in. And yeah, sorry guys, bear with me here. I'm, no, you're just staring at the wall here. I'm just sifting through my poles here. I'm just trying to get all three up so I can we can see kind of how the camshaft we progressed on the camshaft and then up to E85. So the blue line is when it was just blower and headers. And we did see, and because I didn't make any pulley changes to this thing, we did we did see more boost without the cam. Obviously we saw I was seeing eight pounds of boost without the cam. So um, and because I didn't re-pulley them because we'd be out of fuel, obviously. We're out of fuel on 85. I could probably push it a little harder on the 93 tune with boost, but the ultimate goal is to run this thing on, on ethanol. And so that's that's the game with the heads cam. You can see the blue line is, is before the heads cam. So we picked up, you know, we picked up pretty substantially up top here. So we picked up, you know, almost 100 horsepower uh, just on, um, so we pick up 88 horsepower just on the heads cam. And that, and that, and again, that's dropping a pound of boost. We did not pull it to, you know, to, to keep the boost level. So we dropped a pound, we lost a pound of boost, which is pretty typical when you do heads cam. So, and and then on top, you know, the E85, we picked up even more, obviously. So that's a pretty nice gain. This, have done this before. I can tell you that is a huge, it's a huge seat of the pants gain on a car like this, especially on these eight-speed autos when you, you know, and we, on these auto cars, we don't overly concern ourselves with with the bottom end. That's why I don't worry about trying to pull it back and make a bunch of bottom end torque because you stand on these things and they instantly, you know, first gear is so short, even at the track, they come out of the hole so hard. And then from there, it's just a, you know, 6,900, you know, it, it's always about 5,000 RPM, no matter what you're doing. Even if you're just cruising down the street and you punt, you know, you stuff your foot to the floor, it downshifts three gears bumps up to 5,500 and it takes off. So he runs drag radials 100% on this thing all the time in the street. So, so yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait to get to the track with him with this car because we've been with this kind of power. We've been low tens in you know in heat. So on a good day, this is a nine second capable car with this kind of horsepower. So, so there it is, guys. Another one in the books. I'm gonna go take it out on the street and. Make sure the drive is all good. Make sure the shift points are good. Um, Got to bump the shift points up a little bit too, to so it's not you know with that camshaft. The stock shift points run these cars at you know 1,200 RPM. Obviously with a, with a bigger camshaft can't do that. You know I can run them at 15, 1,600 RPM, but I gotta adjust a lot of shift tables. There's there's eight there's eight speeds, so there's a lot of shift tables to go through. So I'm gonna get out on the street. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and keep checking in for uh, more videos.